Defining circular functions. In my opening problem here, I have asked to label all of the intercepts of the unit circle, which as a reminder, has the formula x squared plus y squared equals one. Well, this unit circle, as we remember from our previous uh, topics, has a radius of 1 because this value here is r squared uh, and the square root of 1 is 1. So therefore, each of these extremities, if you like, of the circles are all going to be some version of 1 or 0, 1 or 1, 0. So for example, this will be 1, 0. This will be 0, 1. Obviously, the negative sides have to have negatives in them. This will be Zero, uh, ooh, that was close. Uh, negative one, zero. And this will be zero, negative one. And there are intercepts. If you draw a line with a positive gradient at 30 degrees or pi on six from the origin, what are the coordinates at which the line hits the circle? We better get our protractor and a ruler out. So I've drawn my line and it's hit the circle there with an angle of pi on six. So now what I need to do is just using my ruler, I know that this distance is equal to one, I need to go now measure the other parts. So what I've done is I've just drawn or I've measured the other sides there. Just consider the M just to be a unit uh, here. Uh, I've just set my drawboard to be in meters. And so that means that this coordinate here at 0 0.5 is uh, 0 0.5 high, 0 0.87 across. So I'm going to label that as 0 0.87, 0 0.50. There are my coordinates. Now, I wonder if those particular measurements mean anything to you based on our previous videos. So I'm going to use the class pad now to calculate sine cos tan of pi on six. I want to see if there is any relationship between the trigonometric values of uh, relating to pi on six and these coordinates because something seems vaguely familiar. So I've got my Casio class pad set to radians. Sine pi on six is equal to 0 0.5. I wonder what cos pi on six will be equal to. And cos pi on six is equal to 0 0.87. And just out of curiosity, I wouldn't mind knowing what tan pi on six is equal to. 0 0.577. Now, I'll tell you what's interesting about that is that if I was to take that 0 0.5 and then divide it by the other value, I get 0 0.57735. This will be very useful for our knowledge a little bit later. So now what we've done is we've established that uh, there's a relationship with the unit circle and sine and cos. The x value will be equal to cos of the angle and the y value will be equal to sine of the angle. Now using the unit circle, we can now define the sine and cosine of all of the extremities, 90, 180, 270 and 360. Why is this great? Because we can't do it using a right angle triangle. You can't make a right angle triangle using two lots of 90 degrees because we can't get the hypotenuse and all of that working. So we can now look at these. When our angle is at zero, which remember we start on this line here, I highlight. So when we start from that line at zero, the coordinates of when the line hits the, uh, or where the circle hits the axis, well, that's going to be at one, zero. So therefore, the cos of zero must be one, and sine of zero must be zero. Now three pi over two, so where's three pi over two? Well, remember that pi over two is over here, 
pi is here, 3 pi over 2 is here, and then we go back to 2 pi or zeros over here. So 3 pi over 2 is all the way down here. So the coordinates where the circle hits the angle 3 pi over 2 is 0, negative 1. Therefore, cos of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and sine of 3 pi on 2 is negative 1. Negative 3 pi on 2, so what is that? Well, remember, when we do negatives, we go reverse. So what we do is what uh, we go and start, and we go backwards. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go backwards. So starting with the 0, make our way to 3 pi on 2. Uh, that will become, when we go in reverse, that will be negative pi on 2. This will be negative pi and this will be negative 3 pi on 2. So when we make all the way around, that's going to be 0, 1. So cos of negative 3 pi on 2 is 0, and sine of negative 3 pi on 2 is 1. I know, it's a bit confusing, isn't it? You just have to remember which direction you're going. 5 pi on 2. So with 5 pi on 2, where on earth is that? Because we've got 3 pi on, no, so pi on 2, pi, 3 pi on 2, then back to 2 pi. There is no 5 pi on 2. Unless 5 pi on 2 is means I have to go around the circle again. So after 2 pi, what would come next if I went around the circle again? So 0, pi on 2. Pi is the same as saying 2 pi on 2. 3 pi on 2, 2 pi saying 4 pi on 2 would be the same as 2 pi. So therefore, this would, uh, up at the uh, the vertical axis here, would be 5 pi on 2. So this would also be 0, 1. So therefore, this cos of 5 pi on 2 is 0, and the sine of 5 pi on 2 is 1. 11 pi on 2. Well... Let's, is there a better and easier way to work this rather than having to go around the circles? Well, if I was just to write down, uh, say, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So where 1 represents pi on 2, that's this, so uh, I'm going to call that up. Or And then uh, 3 pi on 2, I'm just going to refer to as D for down. So up, down, up, down. So 11 pi on 2 is going to be at the bottom here. So that's going to be at 0, negative 1. So the cos of 11 pi on 2 will definitely be 0. And the sine of 11 pi on 2 will equal to negative 1. 57 pi. How on earth are we going to do that? I'm not, I'm not going to want to just go 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi. There is an easier pattern, though. Every even number of pi's is on the right-hand side, because 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi. Every odd-numbered pi is on the left. So therefore, 57 is an odd number. It's got to be that leftmost one. So cos of 57 pi is equal to negative 1, and sine of 57 pi is equal to 0. Now, I just gave the game away for the next one, which says 212 pi. Well, that's an even number, so it's going to be the one on the right. So the coordinates will be 1, 0. So cos of 212 pi is going to be 1. And sine of 212 pi is going to be 0. Negative 49 pi on 2. Goodness gracious me. How are we going to solve this one? So this time we're going backwards for this one. What... Full numbered pi is it in between. Well, 49 over 2 pi would be somewhere between 40, negative 48 pi on 2 and 50 pi on 2. So 48 pi over 2, negative 48 pi over 2 is an even number. And so that's going to be at negative 24 pi. And then negative 50 pi, uh, so negative 50 over 2 is going to be at negative 25. So it's going to be in between. So if we keep going around, because uh, it would go 0, negative pi, 
negative two pi, negative three pi. One that comes first, if I'm going through the negatives, is going to be negative 24, so that's going to be here. This is negative 24 pi. This is negative 25 pi. This is in between, because uh, negative 24 pi and negative 25 pi. How am I getting that again? Negative 24 pi is the same as negative 48 pi over two. This is the same as saying negative 50 pi over two. So negative 49 pi over two has got to be in between. So it's got to be down. So therefore the coordinates for this one will be zero, negative one. So cos negative 49 pi over two is going to be zero. And sine of negative 49 pi over two is going to be negative one.